Hello, my name is Sarah and I'm one of the two conservators at the Churchill Archive Centre. During the lockdowns, we've both continued to work on site at the Archive Centre for some of the time, though not both at the same time, carrying out essential monitoring tasks and supervising maintenance works and servicing. This has enabled us also to carry on with other practical tasks and we'd like to share with you some of the things we're currently working on, as well as what we do more generally. We look after the archive collections as a whole, which involves regularly checking and monitoring the buildings and the environment in the stores. Here is Erica carrying out one of our tasks to monitor the temperature and the humidity in the storage areas. So this is one of the tiny tags. And as you can see, we put it in a box that looks like an archival box with collection, but it's a dummy box. And that help us to understand the condition inside each one of these boxes here. We also regularly monitor the pressures in the cylinders that hold the fire suppression gas to ensure the system is operational at all times. So when new collections come in, this is where they will arrive into our sorting room, which is basically our reception area for new collections. And it's been recently refurbished, so it's now a really lovely space to receive this material. And as you see, it can come in all sorts of packages from IKEA bags, but more typically in plastic and cardboard boxes and box files of various sizes. Um, and we've actually had quite a lot coming in during the pandemic um, because people are clearing their houses and so on, and taking the opportunity to have a sort out. So we've got the papers of Patricia Hewitt and Baroness Trumpington here at the moment, waiting for sorting, boxing and cataloguing. So as well as monitoring the normal storage areas, we also have a cold store and that we have to monitor that every three months. What we do here is we keep material in below freezing temperature and that is very vulnerable, vulnerable material such as moving image films or negatives on early plastic material. Um, and although we're controlling the temperature here, we're not controlling the humidity. So inside the, the freezers, they're, they're packaged carefully inside plastic and they have little indicators that tell you whether the humidity is safe or not. Um, and so you'll see when I open this door that they've all got little blue indicators and the blue means that they are safely stored. We also help to formulate procedures for everything we do at the Archive Centre that impacts on the arch archival documents in any way. So, for example, we've created a PowerPoint safe handling guide which our new readers watch before handling any originals. And we're involved in activities from digitisation of collections through to loaning originals for exhibition. So with Sarah, we also work on uh, exhibition loans. Um, we, so the Archive Center lends uh, documents to exhibitions, to other institutions, and we do the condition report. So we check the, the object is in good condition, uh, when it leaves and when it comes back. Uh, we also create mounting, so we're sure that the object will be uh, uh, exhibited in the right condition. So here, for example, I've made a support for one of the documents we wanted to show. Uh, this one is made of museum boards. Um, and we like this kind of mountings or cradle or supports because they're made of boards and not plastic. So we can also use acrylics, uh, but obviously it's not environmental friendly. So this is ones that I've made uh, that they are bespoke. So this is for uh, binding, for example, and these were made for an exhibition that was supposed to take place last year uh, in London, but obviously was cancelled. Uh, so hopefully it will, it will be used later on um, in the year. We carry out a lot of staff training, for example, in good practice for the preservation packaging of collections. We also package the collections, often making bespoke boxes and enclosures for high priority or unusual things. So at the moment we're working on the packaging of Sir James Grigg, um, Secretary of State for War in the Second World War. Um, and this is an example of the next box packaging actually, which uh, as you can see is very tatty, loose, unprotected material, 
the material that actually is in some protection is very hard to get at. It's, it's very risky, it's all creased and bent, all sorts of quite nasty uh, fastenings as well, which will make access not very safe for the reader. So we want to transform that from that very raw state into a nicely packaged state, such as this papers of um, Ernest Bevan, um, Labour MP, wartime Labour MP. Um, and these were packaged some years ago, but they show you it's nicely boxed. Then within the box, uh, everything is in really nice, neat, clean and acid free. So good chemical condition paper, uh, nice, easy access. So the package opens away from the the papers and then within that we've got more acid-free paper enclosing our delicate originals. So as well as this standard packaging I've just shown you, um, of course we have things other than just paper and we have a lot of photographs. So photographs generally, prints will be placed into um, inert plastic sleeves such as this or very special paper which is unbuffered, um, so much safer. And then this this is also standard packaging for our audiovisual materials um, and speaks for itself really in terms of what it is. So we've got cassettes, we've got VHS tapes, we've got moving image film and also other types of material too. So during COVID, obviously for a conservatory, it was a bit difficult to work on the collection because we couldn't be as close to the collection as we wanted. Uh, but one of the things I've done was to create boxes at home. So I just took the measurement and create the boxes at home. And so this is a, what we call a face box. And it's just nice to house uh, some of the volumes and bindings that we have. Uh, again, in uh, archival material, good material and gives a good support. Um, or for example, these kind of boxes that we call clamshell boxes, very light and very strong. Um, so yeah, we have all kinds of housing. Uh, these ones have, are bespoke and we have some that are more standard. Um, so yeah, that's how we protect our collection. So we also have a lot of artifacts in our collection. So every time we have one coming in the collection, we, um, we create bespoke boxes for them. So, you know, we have our two main collections are Winston Churchill papers and Thatcher papers. So I'll show you one of the cigar of Winston Churchill. So this is a box I've made uh, with archival material and it's like the cigar, which is very, very brittle, is held there very nicely and without any constraint. Uh, and then we kept also the uh, envelope where the uh, cigar was uh, originally held. So this is an example um, of how we house an object. And then here's a, an example of a clutch bag um, that belonged to Margaret Thatcher. So you can see we try to make everything uh, fix and hold really well and also easy for um, visitors to come and to have a look very easily so we don't have to touch the object so uh, they can just come have a look and then we can put it back in storage. Um, there's also a mylar protection on the top so we avoid any spitting from visitor by accident. So we should sure be able to show that to visitor without damaging them or putting them at risk. So to show you a bit of a bit more of diversity. So this is an object that belonged to a woman, um, Agnes Hamilton, who was one of the first MP in the UK. And it's her cigarette case. So very fancy metallic case to hold her cigarettes. Um, so yeah, it was a very bold move at the time to be a woman and to smoke. So I really like this object. So this is the Nobel Prize um, that was awarded to John Cockcroft in 1951 in physics. And so you can see how we kept uh, the, the box because it was a really nice box with uh, gold details and inscription. And then we um, preserved the medal uh, just next to that. So we keep everything together and everything is well fixed and well preserved and easy to show to visitors. Sometimes we need to carry out interventive work when high priority or heavily used material is damaged. 
What you can see at the moment is Erica making pure wheat starch paste in readiness for carrying out very interventive conservation treatments, which we will talk about a bit more later on. This aspect of our work we call bench work and is often very rewarding. It can range from simple cleaning and flattening through to full paper or book repairs. What follows is a variety of conservation treatments we carry out, mostly looking at what we're currently working on. So as well as the standard papers that I've just been packaging, um, we, we also have larger format material. And what we've got here is actually some raw material fairly recently come in from the Philip Gould papers. And he was a political um, advisor, I think, to New Labour. Um, and so these are very interesting as, a, as objects of their time, but also physically, um, they're challenging because of their size. They've also come in in a very dirty state. So if I just show you inside this, this bunch of material here, um, it's extremely dirty and dusty. And also the things have actually got stuck together. It's got damp at some point. So this is going to be a challenge just to, to take it apart. Then we will clean the material. Then we will create large safe packages so it can then go out into our reading room. Um, the cleaning would actually be carried out with a variety of different materials. Um, brushes to start with, possibly cotton wool, and then mostly using uh, a latex sponge. So this is a fresh clean one, and once you've actually cleaned some of it, you can see it picks up the mostly carbon-based dirt. And for more delicate things, we might use an eraser like this, and sometimes this eraser then grated and worked over the surface with a, a soft pad. So that's essentially cleaning of paper. And still within this collection, we have got some of the material is framed. Um, so the frames need to be removed. They, they very rarely add anything or, or are really intrinsic to material. Uh, and they can cause problems as well as be difficult to um, actually pack, to actually store. So that will be just a case of using our basic tools, screwdrivers and so on to remove the frame. Um, same with this, this one below. Um, and they may well be mounted um, with adhesive tapes or even with glues. So then we have the process of attempting to remove those tapes and glues as well. Okay, we're currently working on the papers of Hedlund Morley, who worked in political intelligence in the early 20th century. And the conservation aspect of that uh, relates to these, this section where this, the correspondence um, has been folded tightly like this, and originally was actually crammed into a boxes full like this, so really difficult for the, the readers to access. Um, and they just spring back when you try and handle them. So in this case, you can see quite clearly, I think, um, difficult fastenings, also quite dirty, uh, and just impossible to safely handle so, and to put back together. So what we're doing now um, is working through this section of the collection, cleaning it in the way you've seen earlier with the Philip Gould posters, um, but then also relaxing it using humidity so that we can relax out these, these tight creases and flatten them and then package them as normal. So I've actually got here um, a Gore-Tex damp pack ready, and we use this for flattening paper. It consists of some polythene with then a, very, a damp capillary matting, so a polyester base that is made damp, releases the moisture slowly through this Gore-Tex membrane. Then the documents are placed on top of that as well as you can and Melanex is placed over the top and then a loose seal around with some weights. And that enables those papers to just take up moisture really slowly and safely enough to relax the creases so that we can then place them between felts or blotters and then put a light weight over the top and they will flatten out gently and then we can package them. 
So here in conservation, we often apply treatments to our documents and we often do tear repairs, uh, like in this example here, where you have a document that has been damaged here on the left side and there's a large tear going through the text here. If we leave it like that and we leave researcher to handle that document, that tear can extend and we could lose some information. So we want to repair that tear and for that I'm going to use a technique we called a uh, remotionable tissue technique. So it's a tissue that's um, so Japanese paper that has been pre-glued with wheat starch paste and then the paste has been left to dry and now I'm just going to reactivate that paste with a little bit of moisture. And the advantage of that is that I can use as little moisture as possible uh, and I don't have to apply a lot of water on the original documents that could create chemical and physical reactions such as deformation or cockling. Sometimes things are really very badly damaged and we have to do very interventive work. And this is a good example. This is a file of papers from the Julian Amory papers. Julian Amory was a conservative politician who was active in the 40s, 50s, 60s and 70s. Not very old, but you can see um, the terrible state of these papers due to damp. Um, they're actually so delicate that you can't really handle them, I'm not really going to, uh, and a reader certainly can't. So we have to do some uh, remedial work to make them um, fit for use in the reading room, but also to, to deal with the, the poor chemistry um, and deterioration that's going on there. So this is a file that's been conserved, so it was like that. It's now nicely packaged. Um, uh, and I'm just going to handle it to, to show you because the repairs are very, very light. The papers, the original papers themselves are very, very fine as well, which is quite typical of a lot of our correspondence files, these kind of carbons. You can see um, the poor state, but you can also see that I am handling this, it's holding together, uh, and that's because it's got fine tissue on both sides and I've also filled in the biggest uh, holes if you like and made that edge strong again. And the way that we've carried out that repair is to use Japanese tissues. We're using um, a one called um, Tengu natural um, and it comes in a great roll like this. It's absolutely beautiful tissue, very, very fine, long fibres, which means you can, if you need to, apply it over text, which is what we've had to do here. As with many paper repairs, we're using pre-prepared tissue, which needs to be activated with moisture. We do that using calcium bicarbonate to counteract the acidity that is now in those damaged papers. We use a very fine dahlia spray to apply a mist of moisture over the tissue, which is over the document, um, and then we will also apply infills. So we would use a needle to, to uh, create our tissue shapes over a light box. This is a light box here. And we can create, create whatever shape we need to support areas of weakness. When we fill in the missing areas, we usually will water cut the paper. So we'll use a line of water like this. <laughs> and that then allows you to, to get this lovely, lovely feathered edge, which you can then overlap onto your original and get a very smooth repair. 
So here in the studio, we work on flat documents, but also on bindings. Um, so for example, this scrapbook uh, that's part of the Cadogan collection, Alexander Cadogan, who was a British politician. Um, so we have a lot of his documents here. So it's a scrapbook with a lot of photos and like newspaper and really interesting stuff here. Um, the thing is that the binding is damaged uh, from handling and like, um, yeah, not handling properly. So you can see that here, for example, the end caps are in poor condition. It's not um, easy to handle. And if we uh, consult this uh, volume, we might break it, we might break the binding and lose some information. So my job is to make that stable, to consult, uh, to consolidate everything. And so I have an example. So this is part of a, of a series. So this is one I've done already from the same uh, series of volume. So you can see we made a nice box where it's all nicely protected. And then here you can see that on the spine, for example, I've done some repairs. So this was all, the, the spine was completely loose. And so I just did some repair with Japanese paper. So we use a lot of Asian papers like this one. Um, they're very strong and very light at the same time. They're also 100% cellulose. So it's a material we really like to use in conservation. Um, and so we use that a lot for repairs. Um, that can be on paper, but as you can see, also on leather, because this spang is made of leather. We also use leather sometimes. So if the whole spine is missing, for example, we can use leather that is um, of a really good quality leather. And as you can see here, the whole spine of this book was completely missing. And so I just added a new leather here that I dyed and then that I applied with the paste we've done earlier, the wheat starch paste. And now it's like, uh, he has a really good uh, hold and it's like physically stable. So it can be uh, consulted without any problem by our readers. This kind of interventive work does change the original and therefore has to be absolutely necessary. A full record of the work done and materials used is made on a conservation database and this record is kept in perpetuity along with the original. We hope you've enjoyed this snapshot of what the Conservators do and if you'd like to get in touch then please do so via our website at www.chu.cam.ac.uk forward slash archives.